In this video, I'm going to go through some integration by parts problems here. Um, first one we're going to look at is we're doing an integral of x times x minus 3 to the 7th dx. So what I'm going to do here is I want to split this up and do like a product, which it already is, x times x minus 3 to the 7th. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my u, well, I'm going to do u is x because then du will be dx. And then dv, I'm going to let be x minus 3 to the 7th dx. So when I integrate this x minus 3 to the 7th, um, this is going to get a little more complicated. But because we got a nicer sort of du, that might be OK. So when I integrate, this is going to give me x minus 3 to the 8th over 8. And then my integration by parts formula says I take u times v. It's x times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8 minus, let me just write this up, it's the, whoops, sorry, no integral. Formula is that the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral v du. So we had u dv. So this is our uv. And then we want to subtract the integral of v, x minus 3 to the 8th over 8, and then du is dx. Then we need just to evaluate these. We have x times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8 minus, I can sort of factor out that 1 8th, and then I'm going to integrate x minus 3 to the 8th. That's x minus 3 to the 9th over 9, and then I get a plus c. So altogether, I might write this as x times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8 minus x minus 3 to the 9th over 72 plus c. If you wanted to simplify that some, I'm going to notice I have a factor of x minus 3 to the 8th in both of these terms. So I could factor that out and say I get x minus 3 to the 8th. Um, I can factor an 8 out of the denominators. So it's going to leave me with just x here and minus x minus 3 over a 9 plus c. So let's see what this gives me. x minus 3 to the 8th over 8. And then we have x minus x um, over 9. Uh, let's. How about factor out that 9? So let's do it 72. That'll make this 9x over 9. So I'll get 9x minus x. And then minus the negative 3 be plus 3. So in the end, I guess you could write this as x minus 3 to the 8th over 72 multiplied by 8x plus 3 plus c. So generally, when I teach a course, you could stop as soon as you get sort of any of these forms here. Um, so maybe this is what I would accept. 8 times 9 might actually be OK. Point is to get something that's actually the right answer here. Um, but sometimes you'll see answers like this or in certain other forms as well. Next one, um, sort of a classic integration by parts question. We're going to integrate x times e to the x. So I'm going to let u be x and dv be e to the x dx. And then du, the derivative of x is 1, so it kind of gets simpler. Here, so we get du is dx. V, when we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x. And so our integral, let's carry that through, we get u times v, x times e to the x, minus the integral of v du, so that's e to the x dx. So this gives me x e to the x minus the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, plus c. So there you go. Next one, very similar. We're doing an antiderivative of x times cosine x. Um, often when it's x times some well, e to the x or trig function, I let u equal x. And then dv be cosine x dx. Then du is dx. v, I integrate cosine x. I'm going to get a positive sine x. I always tend to think the derivative of sine x is positive cosine x, so it's a positive sine x here. And so what I get, let's say uv is x sine x minus the antiderivative of v du. That's sine x dx. So we end up with x sine x. Antiderivative of sine x is going to be actually negative cosine x. If you different, or differentiate cosine x, you get a negative sine. So you need the negative to correct for that. And so I end up with x sine x plus cosine x plus c. Next one. Same kind of idea again. 
it looks like x times natural log x, but this one we run into a problem. So you do u equals x, you do dv natural log x dx, looks very similar. du is dx, but then v is the antiderivative of natural log x. Um, that I don't know a formula. You might be thinking one over, well, I actually do know a formula, but it's not a common one. Um, the antiderivative of natural log x, you might be thinking one over x, but that's the derivative. So we don't have a nice antiderivative here, so we're not real sure what to do. Um, probably the right thing to do is forget this u dv and try something else. So instead, what I'm going to do is let u be natural log of x, and then let dv be x dx. And the nice thing that happens here is the derivative of natural log x is really 1 over x dx. So we get sort of something that will divide out x's. So we're going to get a polynomial over here. Those will actually sort of combine nicely. Um, x we need to integrate as x squared over 2. We get a little bigger exponent, but that's going to be OK. So we're going to get u times v. That's x squared over 2 natural log x. I guess I wrote v times u. Minus the integral of v du. So that's x squared over 2 times, whoops, 1 over x dx. So I have x squared over 2 natural log x. And then x squared over x is just x. I can pull out the 2 as a half. We're going to integrate just x dx. And up with x squared over 2 natural log x minus 1 half times x squared over 2 plus c. So we get x squared over 2 natural log x minus x squared over 4 plus c. Next one. Uh, we've got x squared times x minus 3 to the 7th. So this one is very similar to the first question, which I believe was just x times x minus 3 to the 7th or something similar to that. Um, I'm going to take a very similar approach. I'm going to let u equal x squared and dv be x minus 3 to the 7th dx. Then du is 2x dx. And v, when I integrate x minus 3 to the 7th, I get x minus 3 to the 8th over 8. And so what I get, let's see, I get u times v, which is x squared times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8, minus v du. So it's going to be our integral of v du. So I'm going to get an x minus 3 to the 8th over 8 times 2x dx. I put this all together. I have x squared times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8. The 2 and the 8 sort of cancel to give me a minus 1 fourth. And I have essentially x times x minus 3 to the 8th dx. Now, this would be sort of close to being done if we could find an antiderivative of x times x minus 3 to the 8th. To do that, though, I'm going to end up using integration by parts again. So I had an x squared, an exponent of 2. Now x is really exponent of 1. My degree is shrinking here. So I suspect I do this again, and I'll probably be done here. So let's try it. So we'll do u is x. dv is x minus 3 to the 8th dx. Then du is dx. v, integrate x minus 3 to the 8th, is x minus 3 to the 9th over 9. And then this I can put together. I want to do my uv over here. Oh, whoops, sorry. That's just for this antiderivative. I have to keep all this original stuff as well. So I have my x squared, x minus 3 to the 8th over 8, minus 1 fourth. And then I can put in like brackets or parentheses here. Um, my integration by parts formula, u times v, that's x times x minus 3 to the 9th over 9, minus the integral of v du. That's x minus 3 to the 9th over 9 dx. So what I get is x squared times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8 minus 1 fourth. I have x times x minus 3 to the 9th over 9. And this antiderivative is going to give me a 1 9th times, let's see, I do an x minus 3 to the 9th, integrate that to x minus 3 to the 10th over 10 do this and put a plus c there. And so when I'm done, what I get is x squared times, actually let's scroll down a bit, a little more space. Um, so I'm going to sort of distribute the minus 1 fourth essentially. I'm going to get x squared times x minus 3 to the 8th over 8 
minus x times x minus 3 to the ninth. 4 times 9 is 36. And then minus 1 fourth, so that's going to be a plus. 9 times 10 is 90 times 4 is 360. I get an x minus 3 to the 10th plus c. And I've got a tendency to just leave this here. You could factor out an x minus 3 to the 8th. Do something with your denominators. You might be able to simplify this down a little bit, write in different form. But we got an antiderivative, um, sort of the point of the question. Um, last one here. Same kind of idea as, a, as the previous question. We're going to end up having to do integration by parts twice. So we have x squared times e to the x. I'm going to let u be x squared and dv be e to the x dx. Well, then du is 2x dx, and v is e to the x. So my initial integral, using the integration by parts formula, I get uv is x squared e to the x minus v, the integral of v du. So that's e to the x times 2x dx. And let me just rewrite this, x squared e to the x. I can pull a 2 out, and I can write the x in front of the e to the x. We get x times e to the x dx. So we start with x squared e to the x, and I have to do an antiderivative of x e to the x. We're sort of making progress here, which is good. But we're going to have to do integration by parts again. So I'm going to do u equals x. dv is e to the x dx. So du is dx. v is e to the x. And then this integral down here, or that formula. I'm going to keep my x squared e to the x minus 2 from here. In brackets, I'm going to do my integration by parts formula for the antiderivative of x times e to the x. So that's uv, x e to the x, minus v du, integral e to the x dx, or integral v du. I should get a, whoops, no. Don't need a plus c yet because I still have an antiderivative. So I get x squared e to the x minus 2 x e to the x, antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And now I get my plus c. And then you could simplify that, or really by distributing the negative 2. So you get x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus c. This one, you could factor out an e to the x. So it's e to the x times x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus c. So you get e to the x times some polynomial. Okay, I guess that concludes these problems for integration by parts.